Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be working on this Ontario Northland GP40 locomotive from Lifelike. I uh, picked this locomotive up pretty cheap at uh, Larkspur Line train store. It was in a bin of all sorts of other locomotives and uh, pieces of uh, older railway equipment. And uh, anyway, uh, this locomotive actually does run, um, but it just needs a little bit of ma basic maintenance, sort of like just some uh, cleaning and a bit of lubrication here and there. And uh, that will allow me to address a much broader uh, subject, which is how to do basic maintenance on uh, the locomotives that have pancake-style motors. So uh, a lot of what you'll see today will be able, you can apply it to uh, both Bachman as well as lifelike locomotives. Uh, they're both pretty much identical as well, as far as the drive system goes. So we're gonna start off by uh, removing the shell of the locomotive. This is a pretty easy process on almost any old lifelike or Bachman locomotive. Uh, on the GP40s, uh, however, though, you just need to remove these two screws on the bottom. On the uh, F units, uh, there are two clips on the side that you kind of pull up, but uh, that's how you do it on that's how you do it on this type. So uh, you know, we'll just take those both out, and then we are inside, and uh, this is where we're going to be uh, focusing our efforts today. Now, there's a uh, a little tab. Let me see if I can hold on. There's a, uh, a little tab, it is uh, right here. And you just wanna push that in. And there's one on the opposite side as well. And uh, once you do that, your uh, motor will uh, pop out like so. So uh, that's how you gain access to it initially. And then once you have it at this state, you can really start making uh, quite a few changes. And uh, the first one that I usually do is uh, Just unscrew these, and when you unscrew these plates, you have to be really careful because right behind this plate is a spring and a brush, and if you're not careful, the spring will pop out, and uh, you'll be uh, on the floor for hours looking for it. So you want to be uh, quite mindful of that. So there's one, and we'll take out the other one. Uh, we can work on all the other uh, components. Springs on this model are in really good shape. You want them to, to look like this. You want them to have, uh, you don't want them to, if they're uh, really compressed, it's bad news because they're not gonna put proper pressure on the brushes. That's how you get the brushes out, by the way. Yeah, and just like that, we've got our motor pretty much uh, ready to for uh, final disassembly. Disassembling this part is pretty easy. You just need to uh, kind of lift that up and pull it down like so. And uh, just like that, we are inside the gearbox. You can begin by uh, removing both the wheel sets. Really nothing uh, too complex. And then uh, you get around to this point and we remove the two last screws which are holding the uh, rest of the frame together. Okay, so we've got those two parts separated, so now we can uh, try to lift off this and uh, sometimes this can be a bit, uh, a little bit tricky. Take your flatheads and work around the ends there. And, uh, well, just like that, we're inside. You can uh, remove all of these parts 
uh, for cleaning if you want. So right here is our uh, arm. So right here is our uh, motor, the uh, armature, and here's the commutator. I honestly can't believe this. This locomotive really must have not had too many uh, miles put on it because uh, you can see this thing is practically spotless. Um, very unusual for a, uh, a locomotive like this. And I can use a little bit of cleaning. You can see there's a few little spots right here, but I don't know. Those might even just be a bit of oxidation. So we're going to take something and we're just going to clean out the uh, spaces. So we're just going to take this little tool here and just kind of run it through each of the uh, spaces and just make sure that they're all clean. Uh, you really don't want to use anything too sharp, uh, otherwise you'll risk putting some sort of a, a burr on the metal which can shear down the brushes. So just doing this is usually enough. And uh, a lot of times, it's very rare if you open them up and they're all shiny like this. A lot of times what you're going to find is that uh, these are quite dirty. Just uh, take some Q-tips and rubbing alcohol and just clean them uh, until they're relatively shiny. That's really all they need. Anyway, now that we've got this thing disassembled, I'm going to clean all the gears and uh, then we can be begin uh, reassembling the uh, loco. So now we're going to clean the gears, and uh, you can use anything from uh, warm soapy water to rubbing alcohol. It really doesn't matter too much. You just want to throw the little devils right in there. And uh, if there's like really thick grease or dirt on your gears, you uh, want to let them soak for a while. In this case, there's just a thin layer of oil, so uh, really we can just go right ahead to clean them. And uh, you can use like a uh, an old paintbrush or a toothbrush. It, it really... Uh, doesn't matter, just something that let's clean them off really well. So we'll just kind of just go around here and just give them a nice clean there. If you remove the uh, magnets, which is uh, not too hard to do, keep them together like that. Uh, you can also scrub these two parts because there's not too many metal components, so just uh. A little bit of scrubbing is not going to, uh, it's not going to harm them. And you can get all the old uh, lubricants and uh, whatnot out of it. Look at that. All right, and I'm just going to go rinse all these parts and uh, let them dry, and then we can begin uh, reassembling this. While our parts dry, I just want to show uh, everybody something else that's really important. You want to really check to make sure that there is no uh, leftover dust and hair and things like that, even after you've cleaned the gears, because it can really hide if you're uh, if you're not careful there in little areas. And you just want to take a tool and remove that because it will uh, really bog down performance. This is really this is what you know, ultimately burns out motors right here because it can put a ton of strain on it. So now that the parts are all dry, we can start off by putting just the slightest amount of oil on this bearing right here, one of the main motor bearings. And out of all the bearings, you don't want to put a lot of lubricant on. It's especially this one because if you put too much lubricant on other bearings, eh, it will bog down performance a little bit because, you know, the motor's having to move fluid around. But um, the biggest issue with uh, putting it on this bearing is that it will, as it spins, it will fly off onto the commutator and it will burn. It will get in between these plates and it will burn and it can uh, destroy motors. Now, uh, that brings me on to my next thing, which is actually lubricating the commutator. This is something that's quite controversial in the model railroading community. Uh, because some argue that, uh, obviously, there's quite a bit of friction here, and if you put a bit of lubricant, it can assist that, but also others argue that uh, it's a lead to uh, motors burning out. So, uh, it's up to you whether you want to do this or not, but if you do decide to put oil on here, uh, only use conductive lube and put 
the most modest amount you possibly can uh, because uh, if you put too much it's going to trash this in this case i'm not going to put any on it because i really don't think uh, it needs it but i leave that decision up to everybody watching obviously so anyway that's now in there we'll put our magnets in You can see the magnets are doing their job because this isn't spinning freely. So that's all good. At this point, we're going to put in the two metal pivots, which go uh, right here as well as right here. And uh, this is where Lifelike made a really wise decision. You see, Bachman uh, decided to pressure fit their gears around these exact same pivots. And uh, as a result, uh, a lot of the nylon gears in these old uh, pancake motors on Bachman engines have cracked. But since uh, Lifelike just decided to have the uh, gears freewheeling around these pivots, they've uh, lasted a lot longer. So that's why uh, old Bachman engines, some of them have a weird clicking noise. It's those gears which have, uh, have over time cracked. Um, it's kind of f funny, actually. I've actually heard success stories where people have taken um, Lifelike gears and put them in uh, Bachman locomotives, which they really like successfully. That's how similar these two uh, drive systems are. Anyway, we're going to put some oil on each of these pivots. As always, you don't want to put much. And uh, use a really light oil. They, uh, these are actually one of the few kinds of locomotives that don't need any grease in them. And we're going to put the uh, slightly larger gears. Uh, there are two different sizes. Let me see if I can show you. I don't think this is the case on all uh, locomotives, but you can kind of see how the one on the right there is just a little bit bigger. So we're putting those larger gears on the bottom, and then we put the smaller gears a little bit higher up, facing down. And you can put a tiny bit of oil on the tops of these gears and the tops of the little gears as well, because they might rub up against each other a little bit. Uh, they shouldn't, theoretically, but if they do, um, they'll prevent any damage. And uh, just like that, it's pretty much reassembled. So we just need to put the other half on, and uh, then we can close this up and uh, do the rest of the reassembly. Something that I always do sometimes, too, is just put a tiny bit on all the spots where there are bearings. And you can even put a little bit here. You see how I'm just putting, like, such a minimal amount. And, of course, the motor bearing on this side. You don't have to be as careful though because there's no uh, commutator to uh, accidentally coat. Let's turn it okay. And uh, before we put in our wheels, I just want to give this one final coating. There we are. What we're going to do now is just before we uh, put uh, the uh, last clip back over we're just going to put these two screws in here it's probably best actually that you put these screws in before putting the wheels in but uh, i've always found that you can get them in even when the wheels are in there it doesn't make much of a difference in my experience oh there we are and then we just take our uh truck cover and uh, the side that has the smaller hole goes on first Followed up by this side. And all we need to do now is just put in our brushes one at a time like that. And then we follow that up with a spring. And then you take one of the plates and, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously you could try to put both springs in at the same time, but uh, it's much easier just to uh, do them one at a time and you put one of the plates over, put a screw in, and then uh, you're good to go. And this part is so easy, you just snap it back in. And pretty much at this point, you put this guy back on, obviously there's a light on this side, so you put that side on first. Make sure your wires two are in a good spot before you go putting the shell back on, otherwise they can interfere. Just put in our two screws, and our locomotive will be pretty much ready to go. I'm curious to see how this, uh, how this one uh, runs, considering uh, the gearbox and everything was uh, 
in a really good shape. And there we are, let's go test her. All right, we've got her all set up on the track. Let's see how this thing goes. Yeah, that's pretty good. Wow, that really improved it. So, uh, it's definitely not the quietest runner out there, but uh, for a lifelike engine, this isn't too bad, actually. It's, uh, it's pretty good. Let's see, uh, let's see what kind of low speed we can get out of it now. This is uh, unfortunately where uh, lifelike embankment engines really don't uh, do so well because they've got three pole motors. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to go much slower. Yep, that's about. Uh, yeah, it seems to kick out at about three and a half volts. Oh, now a camera on a three and a half volts. See, that's three volts right on the nose there. Yeah, not the greatest low speed, but it is a runner nonetheless. Anyway, I want to thank you all so much for watching.